Barry Gibb, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Oh, <laughs> and we have to say thank you for living up to your promise. You said on the phone, you said, look, I, I will come in. If you want me to come into 4KQ, oh, yeah. I'll be there. Yeah, well, you know, we, we, go, um, we go such a long way back, you know. I mean, we, uh, when we were children in Redcliffe, we did the 4KQ talent contest, you know, and we lost. So. Yes, well, we, we were hoping you wouldn't bring it up again. We, we must say the only reason you're here is because we couldn't get the winner, so... <laughs> and we tried. <laughs> I don't I, think it was a record company deal that you won, if you won it no, anyway. No, it was way too early for that kind of thing, but uh, but we, 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 I remember us thinking, oh, we, sh we shouldn't have lost, but we lost. You know? And we'd lost other contests too, so, you know. That would have to be character building for young men at Very the time. Very much so. You know, the bar has always been high. For us, um, you know, the, uh, the, the, the audiences in Australia are very, very strong. They, they're very critical and you have to really be able to perform. And I think that's what helped us all down the line. You know, you, we had to do it. We touched on this uh, when we spoke on the phone about the determination of you three boys. In particular, yeah. these days we get, we get bands and sure. artists that will come into a radio station, but they're always brought in sure. by managers and, and, and record companies. Yeah. You did it yourself. Well, I suppose so, with mum and dad, mm. you know, uh, uh, dad was a, um, he was a, ba a big band drummer during the war, he would play the Mecca circuit, and mum was a band vocalist, and so, you know, I guess it just rubbed off, it was in the genealogy, you know, it, uh, we started harmonising very young, and so we knew something was going on, we just didn't know what it was, you know, and, and we'd make, uh, we'd invent microphones with brushes with cans on the top, and, and pretend to be on stage. At a time when we didn't even know about the stage. So uh, I think the beginning of television was what, wow, this is good, we'll do this. <laughs> well, you, you, know? and your, you and your brothers, <laughs> it's, it's quite, uh, yeah. it's on record that, you know, you, it grew up, it was hard times, you, you yeah. worked hard. Yeah. Your family, obviously, will never know that. If you had that chance again, yeah. which way would you like to do it? The same way. I mean, um, you know, uh, we were in the very early days of everything. Uh, the early days of radio, the early days of television, and um, I remember people standing outside shops and watching TV. You know, there was just there was nothing out there except performing. You you had to you perform hotels, RSLs, uh, in New South Wales, and eventually Melbourne. You know, because in those days I really don't know what it's like now, but in those days Sydney artists could not perform in Melbourne, and Melbourne artists could not perform in Sydney. Mm. So there was like a sort of a glass wall, you know, between every city. So you'd have to fight really to get to the other city and to be accepted. So that's how it sort of worked out. Um, yeah, I'd do it the same way. And, and my mum my mom always says, oh, I'd like to do it all again. And I say, you know, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> 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 Wasn't all great. You know, there were great, it, was, it, was a, it was a roller coaster. Speaking of your mum, um, the last couple of days have been quite an emotional roller coaster coming yes. home. Yes, yes. And... I, I looked at you the other day, and especially after the big day that you had with the unveiling of the statue yeah. and BG's way, yeah. and I thought, man, is Barry Gibb going to sleep well tonight? And then I look at your mum, 92 years of age, what a zest for life. Well, yes. <laughs> Mum's a dichotomy. Um, <laughs> um, she has her good days and she has her not so good days, you know. She's, uh, she's 92 and she's very feisty. And it, it, you can catch her one way or the other, you know. Barry, can I ask you, during your career, there, there have been times of unbelievably prolific songwriting and where people would come around and you'd just go, oh, here's a song. Yeah, I've just written this one. What, yeah. was, what were you doing so well at that time, at those times in your career? It, it, was it just flowing out of no. you? No, uh, it, 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 it's all down to, you know, everybody has, uh, everyone has idols. You know, the very earliest stars that we know of had idols, you know. So um, for me, it was Burt Bacharach and Al David and, and uh, eventually the Beatles. But in those very early days, it was, um, um, my goodness, Cole Porter and people like that that uh, you, just, you just got inspired by. So there was always some inspiration there to, to what I was doing, you know, or to what we ended up doing together. With the songwriting, uh, just going on from what Mark yeah. said, I'm reading a book at the moment by a couple of guys that used to be in uh, Dig Richards and the RJs. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a little segment where he says, look, we, we just left Dig and we needed some songs. And Lonnie Lee said, you've got to see this new mate of mine, Barry Gibb. <laughs> so he says, look, we went around to Barry's place and him and his brothers are just hurling out 100, 150 songs at us. And I said wow. to him, I said, mate, I'm so confused, I don't know what to do. And then you apparently said, pick a song on the top 40, one that you like, 
and I'll have one just like that for you. And he well, said, 15 minutes later, to... Barry Gibb comes out with his two brothers and they've knocked out a song. Well, you know, it, it, it wasn't, it was a little more complex than that. <laughs> 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 I remember telling people um, that, you know, I'd written 200 songs when I really hadn't written 200 <laughs> songs. So, you know, you're, you're always pushing the line, pushing the envelope and telling people it's, it's more than it really is, you know. We always chose somebody we loved. Uh, eventually it was the, the Beach, Beach Boys or the Beatles and people like that. And we say to ourselves... Let's write what we would imagine to be the next Beatles record. Because the Beatles always gave you something. They never did anything twice in a row. You know, every record they made was something unique, you know. And so we took that on. We thought, well, let's imagine the next Beatles record or let's imagine the next Beach Boys record. And maybe that's how it worked, you know. I think that's how it might have worked, you know. A lot of the artists you worked with, though, uh, Barry, it was great to see that you just didn't dump and run for instance Graham Bonnet and Celine Dion and yeah, Barbara Graham's Streisand fantastic. a great singer yeah. and, and yeah. great version a warm rise yeah. just the most wonderful oh, right. song yeah 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 but <laughs> you didn't you didn't sort of dump and leave them you would no. see them through and help with production and and they always had that that Bee Gees sort of stamp of approval on I, them. I don't know quite what that means I just know that uh, 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 I've always, I've always loved great singers, and if I've always, be, if I've had the chance, I would work with those great singers, you know, and uh, that's been sort of my story all along the line, from whether it was Barbara Streisand or, uh, or Dionne Warwick, Dionne Warwick I loved, and mm -hmm. and so there are people, Diana Ross, you know, there are people like that that, where the opportunity was just you could not pass that up, you mm -hmm. just you just had to get involved. I love great singers. But Graham even having the harmonies yeah. of the Bee Gees on there, yeah. at the time you yeah. didn't really think about it, but it just yeah. lifted the level of the song and it just yeah. made it more yeah. of a... You just knew it was compatible to what you were doing and you got involved. Uh, but the great songs, Dig Rigid Raincoat in the River and uh, Lonnie Lee, some of the greatest songs. And, and um, Matt Kipner, who, who uh, left us, who passed on recently, you know, wonderful, wonderful songwriters that inspired us, you know.